Welcome to Pocket Watching with JT. Real accountant reacts. Jason Thornton is a financial advisor licensed in both tax and financial planning. This video is not financial advice. This is JT's real reaction to finance and business related issues to help you think like an accountant. Want more? Go to pocketwatcher.net to book a consultation, check out our gear, or enroll in Pocket Watcher Academy. Now, let's go pocket watching. Hey, pocket watchers. Welcome to Pocket Watching with JT, Real Accountant Reacts. And you know what it is. It is the Wednesday night live, and I'm bringing in my brother, Mr. Orlando Minor. But before I bring him up, obviously, I got to thank all of the pocket watchers out there. We are this close, this close to 50,000 pocket watchers. So listen to me. As you come in, just do me a couple of favors. Number one, hit the like button. It costs you nothing to hit that like button. Hit that like button. Two, if you are not subscribed yet, Go ahead and subscribe to Pocket Watching with JT. And three, share this content. That is what makes the channel grow. Hit the like button, subscribe, share the content. Big, big help. Now, what are we talking about tonight? So let me give you guys, especially the new Pocket Watchers, let me explain to you how this channel actually got started in the first place. For those of you who are unaware, I am a financial advisor, okay? I am not a full-time YouTuber. And honestly, I never, I, I, I don't believe I will ever be a full-time YouTuber. I, it, it's always going to be something that I do also to being a financial advisor. At least that's what I think. This channel got started because I have many clients. And those many clients are on social media just like you're on social media. And when you see something that pops up on your timeline and you see someone talking about financial literacy, someone trying to give game about what you can do to build wealth, you know, all the buzzwords that we hear, generational wealth, deal wealth, financial freedom. When you see it on your timeline, you may not, but at least my clients, my clients actually either they DM me, they tag me in the post, or they will text me and say, hey, check this out. What do you think about this? And just yesterday, yesterday I had a client, uh, they, they called me up and they gave me like this big, this long, weird estate planning question, right? And honestly, the very first thing I said to myself was like, where is this coming from? Because this is a, a very complex entity structure, estate plan type of question. And before I, I really could dig deep into and explain to him 
how it really doesn't work for his particular financial situation. And honestly, this estate plan is only useful to a fraction of a percentage of the people who live in the United States. The, the, the stuff that he's talking about doesn't even come close to being usable for a majority of the people. But I'm going to get into it. It ended up being a clip from a video, an interview from the podcast uh, Million Dollars Worth of Game. And it was uh, Waka Flocka. I, I feel I feel I I feel my age when I say the name Waka Flocka. Like just saying Waka Flocka makes me almost blush because I feel like I'm saying it wrong. But you know, I, for the rest of the show, I'm just gonna call him Mr. Flocka because I don't I, I don't feel like me and him are on a first name basis. So I'm just gonna say Mr. Flocka. And listen, before y'all get to you know getting crazy in the chat. This episode is not a, you know, hit piece on Mr. Flocker. You know, I want you to know that I'm not a big Mr. Flocker fan. I'm not going to say that, you know, I know I can name more than two or three songs, but Mr. Flocker is definitely on my gym playlist. When I'm at the gym, one or two of his songs are going to pop up on my playlist. So I'm not a Mr. Flocker hater. You know, and if you, for some reason, I don't know why, but if for some reason Mr. Flocker sees this video, no first and foremost, this is not hate on you. No, nowhere near it. I will congratulate you on a couple of things. Number one, I absolutely respect your uh, musical career. Not too many people can be as successful as you are in music. There's a million SoundCloud rappers out there who wish they were in your spot and they'll never be there. Uh, point number two. Point number two I'm going to congratulate you on is that based on the interviews that I saw between yesterday and I want to say maybe 10 minutes ago, I will say that Mr. Flocker seems that he has a genuine desire to share and to grow financial literacy amongst our community. And as an accountant, I have to say, I love it. To have somebody in popular culture make financial planning seem cool is, I mean, I couldn't pay for that type of uh, social action. So those two things, Mr. Flocker has 100% respect. But we are going to dig a little deep into the financial literacy and financial tips that he was giving out in this interview and how unpractical it is for 99.99999% of the population. And we're going to get into that. But before we show this video, I am bringing up my brother, Mr. Orlando Minor. What's going on, O? <laughs> What's going on, bro? Man, 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 man. I don't think you've seen this clip. Have you seen this clip? I have not. I have not. I, I love surprising <laughs> O with you because I like to see his, 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 his first reaction. And we kind of talked backstage about a little bit about what's going on. But, you know, I think, oh, you agree with me that to have someone in popular, popular culture really promote financial planning and financial literacy is dope. Right. I, I, I think it's oh, dope. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For 100 percent. And, and this, the thing about it is this interview was like a year old. And this is the first time that I saw it. And then when I looked it up. I see other people are kind of sharing it now. So to have ah. um, to have Mr. Flocka, you know, do this is dope. <laughs> I think, though, he needs guys like us to kind of help him understand the concepts that he's giving out. Because I, I can say for sure, because I, I watched the clip before, mm -hmm. you know, now. What he's saying, someone fed to him. Okay. And the person who fed it to him probably didn't know what the hell they were talking about. Mm. Right? And when you're a celebrity, you are depending on advisors for most things. Because understand, people, to be successful in uh, sports and entertainment, you've got to be like laser focused on the thing you do good. You don't have a lot of time to research all these other things. 
So right. you depend on advisors. And far too often, and I think you know you can agree with this, oh, far too often we find that the advisors are some is someone that's probably unqualified. Oh <laughs> right? yeah. that's like all the time. Right. <laughs> The, the, the financial experts and gurus that somehow, some way, they creep in. They creep into the inner circle of a celebrity. And they have no real credentials. Now, some do have credentials and they're just, you know, liars and crooks. And I'll admit that. Just because you have letters behind your name does not mean that you're going to be perfect and that you're going to have good morals and you're not going to be a thief. I'm not going to say that. But at least give yourself a shot at getting some good information by having someone that's actually qualified. But if I had to guess, someone who was able to get into Mr. Flocker's ear, I feel as if they were either like an insurance agent that really doesn't deal with financial advice, they deal with selling insurance. Or there's just some jack leg financial expert who's trying to sell him on a lot of expensive services. And, and I'll get into why this is a lot, uh, a lot really an, an expensive um, estate planning setup that really won't achieve what you think it's going to achieve. So, you know, real quick, though, I mean, we're almost at 50,000. Some people may not be familiar with your channel. Oh, could you explain you know, your channel and everything. Cause I want to make sure everybody knows we're on the same page. When we show this clip, I don't know where the show going to go after I show this clip. So while we still have, have a little time of calm, can you explain right, what right. goes down on your uh, YouTube channel? Yeah. So on my, on my channel, I tell people how to get into real estate, I'm trying to help people get into their first rental property. We talk about all things, financial stocks, some crypto stuff, but we, you know, that's where I, I just want to get everybody understanding that real estate is one of the biggest ways to generate wealth and how you can do it from the bottom. But they, will they become millionaires overnight? That's what they want to know. Because here's I the mean, issue. Here, they, here's they, the I issue. Mean, oh, <laughs> I, don't see, I don't see a Rolex on your wrist. Uh -huh. You don't have a, you know, yellow Lambo behind you. Right. Right, right. So I don't think they want to hear what you got to say. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, the, the, <laughs> I mean, I could, I could easily come out here and tell you, you could be, a, you'll be a millionaire tomorrow. You'll be wealthy. You'll be making a thousand dollars a day starting tomorrow. <laughs> you can, you can become I can, a millionaire real estate investor with no money down, right? Right, right. Isn't, I mean, isn't I can, that how I, it works? Yeah, I could come out here and tell you that, but on my channel, you won't get that. It, we, right. we talk about no the money right down, way. Bad credit, right? No money down, <laughs> a, a 400 credit score, and I, right. I can become a millionaire, a real estate investor. Yeah, yeah, that 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 seems the going way of these scam artists and right. a lot of these gurus. No one wants to really tell you that it's going to take hard work, yeah. a lot of hard work to get started into real estate and to you know to grow the portfolio and get that passive income because that's what everybody wants that passive income that's what that's what they say that's what they right. say all right so here we go we're gonna watch this clip i'm going to give you my real reaction orlando's going to give you his real reaction i'm going to break down why what he's saying is very very near gibberish i'm not saying that it doesn't make sense for a, like I said, a very small population of the United States. Could this work? Eh, maybe it could work. But in a general sense, what he's saying is absolute gibberish. And for all the people who are like cheering him on in the comments, clearly they don't even know what the hell he's talking about because you <laughs> wouldn't be cheering this on because it's mostly gibberish. But let's let's take a look. And once again, I don't think Mr. Flocker came up with this himself. Someone is in his ear, and obviously that person has gained his trust because there's no way I would allow my client to, to hear something like this and just, just run with it. So here we go. Let's take a listen to Mr. Flocker and financial literacy. That mean everything. 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 
Mm. So for me to y'all, clean your credit up. That mean everything. Maybe everything. everything. All right, well, real quick, clean your credit up. Clean your credit up. 100%, obviously. If you have collections, if you uh, have a lot of bad debt on there, yeah, clean your credit up. Now, do mm -hmm. you submit a form to the credit uh, companies and basically lie and say, this ain't you? That's not, that's not cleaning your credit up. That's you lying. Private trust. That sounds kind of right. weird. Right. That that's you lying. Trust. But let, let's let's keep this thing going. <laughs> now I'm not saying that's what he's saying. I want to be right, clear. Right. It's just that there's far too many people on the internet that tell you, oh, you can get mm. anything off your credit report. Well, you may just get it off my credit report. Are you saying that I should lie and say that wasn't really me who borrowed the money? Right? Is that what you mean? That's for the most part, scammers online say that. But when Mr. Flocker says clean your credit up, he's got 100% of my support. Let's go. Stop putting everything in your name. Create a business, an LLC. Put everything in your LLC. Mm. All right. You know what? I'm going to keep stopping this over and over again. So I'm going to let it play all the way through. <laughs> and then we're going to go back. Because otherwise, okay. he'll never get, okay. a, get a word out. So I'm going to let okay. this play all the way through because it ain't that long of a clip. And then we'll break it down because otherwise y'all won't get the full effect. So here we go. I'm going to shut up and let him say his full spiel. Think in your name, create a business, an LLC, put everything in your LLC. Clean your credit up. That mean everything. Maybe everything. everything. Stop putting everything in your name, create a business, an LLC, put everything in your LLC. Mm -hmm. and, let, and open up a C Corp. If you don't know that you need to figure these out. I'm telling you the names. Get a C Corp to run an LLC. If you want to make it even deeper, go get a trust fund and run a corp that runs the LLC. You want to get even deeper, own two um, trust funds for your business and your person to run that trust that runs all the business. Um, trust funds for your business and your person to run that trust that runs all the business. And to run that trust that runs all the business. It can get deep, my guy. Yeah, absolutely. And Donald Trump actually showed me that method. That's how he didn't pay tax. One a kind of that method, but yeah. Oh. That's weird, right? <laughs> That's you vote for Donald Trump? Excuse me. Well, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that, as you see, it wasn't that long of a clip. Uh, but in a very short time span, a lot of gibberish was spilled out. But to the uh, person who does not know how these things work, that might have sound like game. That might have sound like something that I, I, you should support. Based on the comment section. Uh, right, based based on about. the comment section. <laughs> Whoa, based on I'll the comment you section, what. you would think this sounds dope. So let's let's break each part of these uh, each part of the thing down. So he says, he says, stop putting things in your name. Stop putting things in your name. Well, that could be good advice. Mm -hmm. It could also be bad advice right it depends mr flocker it depends and here's why when we try to decide on how to create entity structures that would best benefit the client one of the things that i'm going to ask my my client is who are you trying to protect something from right, right? Because that's one of the most important things when it comes down to entity structure, when it comes to uh, estate planning. Who mm -hmm. are you trying to protect? And who do you think is coming after you? Right? Mm -hmm. Who's going to try to attack your assets? So when he says, stop putting things in your name, well, then by default, what you're saying is you're the problem. You're the target. People are trying to come after you. Now, honestly, the general person out there, the person who is looking at me right now, who in the hell is coming after you? Just, 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 in, a general, just in a general sense. This is, this is not a uh, shot. Funny, bro. But I'm just saying, in a general sense, who is coming after you? Most people are not targets it's normally a celebrity a public figure these are the people who are targets <clears throat> so when you say stop putting things in your name i'm gonna quickly explain why 
That's extremely silly. A hey, shouts out to uh, LaMarcus Chapman with the uh, 999. Didn't even say anything. No question. Uh, you know, just just giving us 10 bucks. So I, I appreciate that, man. Thank you for the support. I appreciate that. So let me explain why that's a silly thing to say. Okay. Here's why it's a silly thing to say. Stop putting things in your name for the average person. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's play out the logic. Here's the hypothetical. He says, stop putting okay. things in your name. Put it in the name of the LLC. Put okay. it in the name of the company. Okay. okay. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's say I have my home. I take Mr. Flocker's advice and I put my home in the name of the LLC. Now the LLC owns my personal residence. Okay. Uh, hmm. And then the company gets sued. Okay. Company gets sued. Let's say I am a tow truck driver. And for some reason, somehow, some way, while driving down the highway, the car that I was towing fell off the back of my truck. Hit three or four or five cars, killed about two or three people, you know, so I get sued, right? Obviously, my insurance is not enough to cover all of the damages. Then right. we have, you know, the wrongful death and all that liability. Clearly, I'm probably going to lose this lawsuit, right? I'm going to mm -hmm. lose. Insurance is going to cover a portion, but it ain't going to cover everything, right? Right. Now, remember, I took Mr. Flocker's advice and I put the home, my personal home, in the name of the business. What did I just do, Orlando? Uh, yeah, now they can come and take your home, too. <laughs> when they <laughs> see you. <laughs> like, all right. Now, all of my personal assets that I was trying to be, you know, a, a smart, creative. Mm -hmm. I was trying to be creative. Now my home is attached to the business lawsuit. Right. And now they can take my home to satisfy the lawsuit that right. I'm sure mm -hmm. I would have lost. Yes, right? 100%. Hey, we're, real quick, let y'all guys know, me and Orlando will be on the lead attorney's channel tomorrow. And uh, around, it's going to be what six six o'clock eastern time six o'clock eastern time so me right. and orlando will be on the lead attorney's channel six the reason why i bring that up is because the lead attorney has been the number one source of information when it comes to this uh cardi b versus tasha k civil lawsuit right mm -hmm. and if you were unaware cardi b won she won an award that was just around $4 million, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's say Tasha K took Mr. Flocker's advice because this clip's a year old, right? This clip mm -hmm. is a year old. So let's say that Tasha K saw this clip and she decided to take his advice, put her personal home, her personal cars, all the stuff that would normally be in your personal name she put it in the name of her business. Tasha K just lost a lawsuit to Cardi B for about $4 million. Right. That would mean her home, her cars, all the things that would normally be in her personal name would be Cardi B's right now. Right. <laughs> I mean, it would, it would right. take some time right. for all the paperwork right, right. and stuff to come through. But at some point, she would have to walk out of her own personal home and hand the keys over to Cardi B. Right. If she took this advice. If she took the advice. Because it, it's, it's it's gibberish is what the it is gibberish. Saying. I I think the problem that we're, that I'm it's because trust me, I had no clue about you know LLC Twitter and all this crazy stuff with people in llcs because for me it's just normal llcs you use it to protect your real estate all the other right, stuff right, right. right but what i what i see when you go on social media is as soon as you start talking about llcs people treat it as especially in our community treat it as like this mythical beast like it's right. like you get an <laughs> llc 
and you've made it. It's magical. You've made it. It's magical. <laughs> and then don't 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 even start talking about trust because we know trust and trust fund, baby. You must be really doing you it rich. if you got a trust. You got trust. <laughs> listen, people. Listen, listen. I you can get a trust set up for anywhere between five hundred and eight hundred dollars, depending on right. how complex the trust mm -hmm. is. Just having a trust is not a sign of wealth. A trust is just an, an entity structure that's used for certain estate planning purposes. But there's, there's a couple of questions here uh, in the chat that I want to uh, touch on before I go too far. I remember someone said, um, what if they put the, yeah, here we go. He says, what if it's in a different business name? Okay, what if okay. it's in a different business name? So I have to assume when you ask that question, uh, Tay62380, I have to assume when you say that, that this business is really a shell business. It has nothing mm -hmm. really to do that's uh, revenue generating. You just set up an LLC separate from the LLC that you're running your business from that got uh, sued. Right. Because clearly, mm -hmm. if you're putting the LL, if you're putting your personal assets in an LLC that's operating, that's dealing with the public, then it too still be liable to a lawsuit. So to mm -hmm. make your question rational, I have to assume you're talking about just creating an LLC on the books, but it doesn't really do anything to the point where it would be subject to a lawsuit. OK, so let me explain how that would work. If the IRS was to find out that you had personal assets in a shell company that has no real function of generating income, then at that point, it looks as if you're trying to hide things, right? Because if it was bought and maintained by a business, then naturally you're taking a deduction for the purchase of certain items, the depre depreciation of certain items, the maintenance and repair of certain items. So now for you to set up a business entity to put personal assets inside, and you're also taking these deductions for it, that is tax evasion. You are not supposed to set up a business only to receive deductions or to hide personal assets you would mm. be committing a crime. So to answer your question, what if it was in a different business? Only one of two things would happen. Either it's a real functioning business, so it too would still be subject to a lawsuit and you could lose your personal assets to a lawsuit, or it's not a functional business, it's just a shell of a company, and then now you're dealing with tax evasion. So and, either and way, it ain't good. And one thing I wanna include, if people are thinking about taking their home and putting it into an LLC, is that when you do that, first of all, you got to take it out of your name, put it into an LLC, which gets you higher rates because yeah. it's a business now. Yep. Uh, the loan to value, um, how much you can borrow off of it is, is lower on top of that. So once you do that, you locked yourself in and you can no longer get the type of rates that you would get if you was your primary residence because it's a business now. Right. So now you're going to go from that that cushy three and a half percent that you got that, that you're at when you're doing a primary residence. Now you're going into the business land of five and five and six percent, right. you know? <laughs> right. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous on its face. Listen, the reason why you set up an LLC and a lot of people mistakenly, they'll say LLC, like limited liability corporation. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a limited liability company. And the reason why you set that up is because you want separate civil liability from people who would attack the business for the most part for the right. business. Now, if you are a person who possibly could be subject to a lawsuit, then also if you were sued personally, the business assets would not be a part of the lawsuit. Right now, obviously, right. your interest in the business because you own the business mm -hmm. could play a role in that. But the assets of the business itself is going to be separate from you. But here's the issue. Given the normal person situation, 
who's a business owner, the business is far more of a target of a lawsuit than the individual. Nine times out of ten. Nine Mm -hmm. times out of ten, the business itself is going to be the bigger target. It's not going to be the individual. So let's that's the first thing that he said. Now, let's move on to the next thing he said. The next thing that he said was have a C corporation Mm -hmm. on the LLC. (laughs) Now, Now we're just being redundant. Now we're just being redundant. Now, there are several reasons why you would have a C corporation and then the C corporation would own an LLC. But in most situations where I've seen that play out is because a C corporation could have multiple business into uh, interests, right? Not just one, because he's just talking about one thing. Like, let's say you have a C corporation, that C corporation owns a tire shop, it owns an ice cream shop, and it, you know, it owns an amusement park, whatever, right? Right. Each one of those businesses need to be owned by an LLC, technically, right? Let's say mm-hmm. each one of those businesses is its own LLC. It and should. the C Corporation owns all three of them. That right. makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. That's not what Mr. Flock is talking about, Mm-mm. right? But that is, you know, a scenario where it would make sense for a C corporation, which is the parent company, the holding company, right, that owns separate businesses. That would make sense in a general way. But here's it, where Mr. Flock kind of falls off the rails with the logic, okay? There's a particular reason why a C corporation would be attractive for your business structure. For most small businesses, it's not. Most of the people who he's speaking to fit into the category of being a small business owner. Uh, Shout out to Joseph for the uh, $5 super chat. Thank you. Let me see. He said, I think most people say having a holding company LLC own a operating company and store the assets and have the cash pass up uh, the holding company. Yeah, there's, there's many situations where that works. For the most part, I might get into that, but we'll, we'll see. Otherwise, this this show will be all, all night. And I can't. I got to get to work in the morning. So, all right. So, there are reasons why you get a, a C corporation. C corporations are extremely attractive for two main reasons. Number one, it's the best business structure for raising capital. When I say raising capital, I mean bringing in investors because you can easily sell shares, right? Partnerships, there's a little bit more work that has to be done uh, with with partnerships in certain situations. But as far as raising capital, a C corporation is probably the easiest business structure to raise capital by bringing in investors, basically selling equity. That's one of the top reasons why you would do a C corp. The other top reason is it is the main business uh, structure that is completely separate from the owners in two ways. Number one, liability for lawsuits. If a C corporation is sued, the shareholders are not affected, at least by the lawsuit. Now, it could hurt the business that, (laughs) that down the line hurts the shareholders, but you're not going to be involved in the lawsuit for the most part. The second part of that is separation for tax purposes, meaning the C corporation has a completely separate tax liability. It files its own tax returns. It pays its own tax on it. So those are the two reasons why you would do a C corp for the most part, raising a capital and the separation of liability and tax. But here's the issue, people. Most (laughs) small businesses that would be completely impractical. And let me explain why that's completely impractical. Most small businesses would not be able to take the punch in the mouth of double taxation. Let me explain what I mean by double taxation. If I own a C corporation, and let's say I make $30,000 a year with this C corporation, the C corporation itself, 
and let, you know, we're talking about the average small business out here. That's a reality. Some average, like little small businesses, they're making probably a profit around 30, 40, maybe $50,000 a year, right? Not revenue, I'm talking about net income. You're making your 30, 40, $50,000 a year with a C corporation. That would mean that the C corporation has a tax liability of uh, 21%. It used to be 35%, then around 2018, it dropped down to uh, 21%. Seems good, right? Seems, seems pretty decent. But what happens when you need the money? That's the C corporation. The C corporation made the $30,000, $40,000. But you as the business owner, you need the money, obviously, to pay your bills. You're not balling out of control. I mean, you got a nice business that's making about thirty, forty, dollars maybe $50,000 a year. But that's not balling out of control in a way where you can make that money and it just stays in the business. You as the business owner, you need that money to survive. What happens when the business then gives the business owner a distribution of the money from the business to actually survive? You get taxed on the distribution from the corporation. The corporation already got hit at 21%. Then you get hit. You're getting double taxed in that situation. The average small business has no reason to be a C corporation because you're going to be taxed twice. Most small businesses right. can't take getting taxed once. You're going to get taxed twice in that situation. Have you ever heard of a small business talking about forty, fifty thousand dollars annual uh, net income ever really being a C corporation? I have never seen it. You, you know, we see a lot of, I mean, that's pretty much our a business. Lot. We see tax return. Right. I have never, ever seen a small business as a C-Corp. Because it, does, it, Me it personally. doesn't make sense. <laughs> it, it, it does not make sense for a small mom and pop business. And most businesses, I think last time I checked, it was around like 75%. 75% of all businesses are owner-operated businesses. Right, mm -hmm. solo owner operated yeah. businesses. And if Sole that's the case, a C corporation is not the best business structure for that small business because you're gonna be taxed twice on the money. Now there's ways around it, right? There's ways mm -hmm. where, okay, I got a salary, right? So my salary is a deduction for the C corporation, right? So let's say right. the C corporation did a net income of $50,000. I took a salary of $45,000. So my salary is a deduction for the business. So the business really didn't make 50, it made 5,000 and I took a W2 income of 45. It's like, okay, yeah, smart but, guy. But, uh, <laughs> so what the hell did you do this for? Cause what now you you're, being, you're being taxed on a $45,000 personal salary. Then the C corporation is being taxed 21% on the $5,000. You got to pay me to file two tax returns. I'm doing 1120 tax, uh, C Corp tax return. I'm doing your personal 1040. You're not making out on this deal. You're losing yeah. on this deal. There's no reason to do that. Yeah, husband, unless, uh, unless you know, some people out here just want to be like, I have a C Corp. <laughs> right, right. And they're like, man, what you got? You, you got an LLC? I got a C Corp. <laughs> it's, like, it's like so like... <laughs> I got C Corporation. It's like, good job. Good job. Good, good job. job. That was a smart Lose move. It, buddy. You're making about $45,000 a year with that C Corp. Good job. I, I'm almost uh, forgetting the other part. So I got I to gotta play the clip because I right. can't remember all the stuff because he says it in just a short amount of time. But most of it is gibberish in the sense of it doesn't make sense for the average small business. So let's let's see mm. what he says. Here. Everything. everything. Stop putting everything in your name. Create a business, an LLC. Put All right, we, we talked about that. You mm. don't want your personal assets in the name of the business because if the business gets sued, you lose your personal assets. The reason mm. why you set up the LLC or at least the reason why your accountant or your attorney advise you to set up the LLC is to protect your personal assets if the business was to be sued and vice versa if the business if you get sued the business assets are protected so, 
So, so in this clip, is he talking about, is this just strictly business when he says, hey, get your, don't put your name in anything. Is that no, he's, what he's, he's talking not, about? Yeah, he's saying anything. He's, it, the, the impression I get, he's talking about your personal stuff. And when he's going to talk a little more and it's going to clear it up for oh, you too. Okay. I, okay. I've seen the okay. whole clip. So he's, okay. the more he, he talks, the more you'll understand what, he, what he's getting at. So okay. let's, let's keep it going. Put everything in your LLC. Everything. Um, and, okay. let, and open up a C Corp. If you don't know that you need to figure these out. I'm telling you the names. You see Corp to run an LLC. If you want to make it even deeper, go get a trust fund to run a corp that runs the LLC. All right, here we go. So we already talked about why the uh, the C Corporation is silly for most small businesses. It's, it's just silly. You're going to get taxed twice. And if you're not taxed twice because you're taking a personal salary that deducts the overall business income, then you basically did, you know, you set up the C Corp for no reason. There's no benefit right. now. Because you might as well, you would be taxed basically the same if it was just a solo member LLC, right? So whatever. Right. Now the next step is to start a trust and have the trust operate the C Corp. All right, Orlando, we, we've seen a lot of trust. And right. I know in popular culture, when they hear the term trust, and you, you talked about it a little earlier, trust mm -hmm. funds and stuff like that, they think that, you know, someone having a trust, that is some kind of sign of ultimate wealth. I right. mean, a trust, like I said before, you can get a trust started for like 500 on probably the low ball end, maybe about 1,000, 1,200 bucks. It's not an extremely complicated process. But here's the issue. There's many different types of trust. And for the of sake of this live stream, I'm only going to talk about two. <laughs> I'm only talking <laughs> about, so two. I'm talking about the main is. concept of two type of trust. Right. I'm not going to be going all night about the very, very, very many different types of trust. But in a general sense, there is a simple trust and a complex trust in the general sense. A simple trust is a trust that distributes all of its income to the beneficiaries. Golly, this is gonna this is gonna be boring. Listen, people, I'm sorry. I, cause, cause <laughs> I have to explain what's going on so you can understand why what he's saying is basically gibberish. All right, so here we go. You have a trust. With a trust, there's normally three parties. You have the grantor of the trust. The grantor of the trust is the person who originally has the assets that puts into the trust. View the trust as a bucket, okay? Three people are involved. The grantor. The grantor is the person who puts the assets into the trust bucket. This would be you in the example that uh, Mr. Flocker is giving. This would be you. You are putting the C Corporation that operates the LLC into the trust bucket. You're the grantor. Then you have a trustee. The trustee is the person who manages the trust, right? So the grantor puts the stuff in, the grantor basically created the rules and they actually named the beneficiaries, right? Then the trustee manages based off the rules set by the grantor. Lastly, we have the beneficiaries. The beneficiaries is, is the individuals, or it also could be an entity like a, uh, uh, let's say a charity or something like that. The beneficiaries are the people who has the interest in the trust to actually get stuff from the trust, right? That's what the right. trust was set up for, to give stuff to someone, right? All right. In this situation, you either have a simple trust where all the income that is uh, generated within a fiscal year has to be distributed to the beneficiaries, meaning you can't hold on to any of the new money. The principal money is cool. The assets that you put in, that can stay in the simple trust. But any of the income that's generated within that fiscal year has to go out to the beneficiaries. OK, mm -hmm. in this scenario, you're not saving anything in tax because the income is still going to 
the individual person, right? So if you right. set it up and there's beneficiaries, you're, that person is still getting taxed at their individual tax rate. So there was no tax saving in this situation. You simply created a new bucket called a trust that actually owns, right? It owns the assets. The trustee is now the person who has constructive control over it now. You handed it off. You no longer have control of the assets. You wrote the rules, but you no longer have control over the assets, right? Then there's the complex trust. The complex trust is basically the same situation. The difference here is the trust itself can keep the income. It can either distribute the income to the beneficiaries or it can keep the income. But that means the trust itself is going to be taxed on that income. And listen, people, the tax rates for a trust are higher than the tax rates for individuals. So if you're trying to set this up to save tax, you're not. You're missing the whole thing because the trust mm. is going to tax at a higher rate than the individual rate, right? And if you were setting this up for some sort of protection against lawsuits, you could have accomplished that with just the LLC. The LLC itself gives you protection against lawsuits. So mm. now you're hustling backwards. So to put that into the uh to put it into the trust for the purposes that he's talking about makes no sense. It, it makes no sense. So, so just this is just my situation that I do. So mm -hmm. with all of my properties, I put them in the LLC, right? And then you're right. doing that to protect yourself, right? You're doing right. that so that if any of my tenants try to sue me, they're gonna sue the LLC, what's in the LLC, which is just exactly. that property, not me, right? Exactly. And then I have the trust, but the trust isn't to try to try to get away from taxes or anything. It's to protect, protect. Um, it's to protect my beneficiaries, which is my give stuff to my kids. There we go. Yep. So that when I go to when if something happens to me, then I can go go through a got bypass probate and all Great that other point. stuff. So. <laughs> so that's the difference between the two. So that's what I'm trying to accomplish. There are two different entities for completely two different reasons. Right. Oh, so, real quick. So I, I got a question. So right. the, the trust that you have, is right. it a uh, revocable trust or is it an irrevocable trust? It's a revocable trust because mm -hmm. I have to be able to change things in it. Right. I have to be able to change it. I'm still yeah. livid. Like I, I need to be able to to <laughs> say, to you know what? Yes. Yeah. To make adjustments because I buy properties. I sell properties like there's right. just it's a lot of movement. Right. Lot Maybe movement I don't. Right. Right. I, right. I wanted to ask that question because so, people are, are unaware. So if you have a revocable trust. Right. Remember, I talked about the grantor of the trust is the person who makes up all the rules. If it's a revocable trust. That means you're still getting taxed at your personal rate. Mm -hmm. at that. The trust is not going to be taxed because it's revocable. You can make changes to it. So in the eyes right. of the IRS, the trust is not the taxable entity. Mm -hmm. It's the individual. Correct. You're the taxable entity. Now, if it's irrevocable, mean you created the rules, it's in there. Now you can't make any changes. Yeah. It's over. Everything is in the hands of the trustee following the rules that you made, let's say 10 years ago, right? But now things have changed and maybe you have another child, right? right. What, do you, like, what, what do you do? You can't make any any changes to it. Or, 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 or what What if, what if, like, mm -hmm. like listen, you, you don't want to give something to your son at 30, you want to wait till 35, or maybe you want to bring, your, there's so many and changes you didn't, that you- And you didn't put that in at And the you beginning. didn't put, right, right? you didn't you put didn't that in You didn't realize that your son was irresponsible and right. so eight years after you created the irrevocable trust. Right, right. What you do right. Now? now you just you exactly. stuck with what you got. This is why, listen, as much as I respect Mr. Flocker, you need to consult actual accountants and attorneys before you try to do these things. Because I've seen plenty of times where a client got sold on this extremely complicated estate plan. I mean, they have family limited partnerships. They have all these moving pieces and different things. And the person has 
an estate that's maybe worth two or three million dollars. <laughs> I was like, like I know that sounds. I don't want to laugh at two or three million dollar net worth. Right, 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 right. But that's not something where you need this complex situation. Mm -mm. Right, you, you no, don't need a, a family limited partnership and all these things. You can get by with you know a will or a very simple trust. And what uh, mm -hmm. Orlando alluded to before, the reason why he said he had that trust is because a trust is something that bypasses probate. So, you know, God yes. forbid if something happened to Orlando and he only had a will because a will do, is involved in probate, then really is. your assets is going to be tied up in the probate process. That can take years. The Listen. probate process can take years. <laughs> Look, and then what can you explain? To explain, because people don't know what probate is. I guarantee uh, okay. they don't know what probate is. Right. I know they so, don't. All right. So probate is the court process, and it's governed by what state you're in, right? It's not a federal law. It's a state law, right? So what happens is when someone dies, their assets has to go somewhere. Their stuff has to go somewhere. And probate court is the uh, environment where legally they decide where the stuff goes, okay? If you have mm -hmm. a uh, if you have a will, then normally, if the will is verified that it's legal and you know everything is correct, the judge is going to look at the will and they're going to follow the instructions in the will. Once again, just having a will doesn't make the probate process go much faster, right? It's faster than not having a will because without a will, there's a bunch of headaches. But you can still be in uh, probate for years, even if there is a will. But the will basically gives the judge in the probate court instructions on how to distribute their assets. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a will, woo! At that point <laughs> now, the judge is basically going to tell everyone who has a legitimate claim to your estate, hey, y'all figure it out. Y'all come to an agreement. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do, you know, make a decision on what's going on. I prefer it if y'all figure it out and come to an agreement. And also the judge is still stuck with certain rules and laws. Like there's there's states that will dictate no matter what, you can't cut your wife out the will. I don't, it doesn't matter what you do. You can't cut your wife completely out of a will or you can't cut a underage child out of your will. So your will could be invalid. That's why it's extremely important. I know a lot of people go online and try to get a will, but you're going online and you're getting these wills that could have its base in California law and you right. live in New York. So I right. always say that you want to get a statutory will. A statutory will basically means that you got a will drafted by an attorney who's licensed to practice in the state where you reside, because that's the state that's going to have uh, jurisdiction over probate for your estate. You want an attorney that is licensed in your state to draft a will that they know actually conforms to the laws of that state. Otherwise, the will can be thrown out. You can pay your little three hundred dollars and get a will online. And then for some reason, the judge has to throw it out because it doesn't conform to the actual laws in the state. And probate law changes. Right. Right. Maybe and, you and got it like eight years ago online and eight years ago it was good. But because you don't have an attorney who drafts it, who will probably call you and contact you and update you and say, hey, the thing that we drafted now doesn't apply. We need to make adjustments to your will. You don't get that with uh, an online right. and, will. And and one thing that I do, and I don't want to go too deep into it because I know it's mm. like it's one oh, of we'll, those we'll go all night. Go <laughs> but but I do want to say a lot of times what people don't understand when it comes to the probate probate is that they believe that since you are married to an individual that you will bypass probate. And that only nope. works if you jointly own the, the, the what's the name? The, the, the properties uh, together. But, assets, but, yeah. Right, whatever the assets. But I've seen plenty of times where the husband owns the house and his name is on the house. He owns that asset and it goes straight into probate right yeah. after something happens to him. And a lot of times people are like, yeah, we're married, so it's all good. It doesn't work it like doesn't that. It doesn't work like that. And the wife and the kids are sitting there in limbo. Right. Like, like what is going on? That's why you have to have certain things in place. Like, you know, obviously a trust bypasses 
um, uh, the probate process. So if you have a trust that basically says it's, let's say it's uh, revocable, like the one that Orlando has, it's revocable. He right. can make changes. It becomes irrevocable when he dies. Yes. <laughs> he can't make changes anymore. Yes. So the moment he dies, it's now irrevocable. And if all the major assets that he has that he wants to go to his wife or he wants to go to his children, it bypasses uh, probate and they get it just about instantaneously. Yes, they instantaneously. Uh, but, a couple of real quick things. The thing is, things, and real, and I, and real quick, I just want to say, a lot of times what people don't understand is that there are fees associated with probate and oh. and the government's going to take their chunk out. The government's going to take yeah, that Out ch- of your estate, yes. <laughs> right. They're going to take yes. the chunk out. Fees, so all that stuff, the attorney mm-hmm. is probably going to get paid out of the estate. So you want to make sure, right. if you can, you want to make sure you set up situations where you can avoid probate. And we are really kind of getting off topic. I'm sorry. But, sorry. <laughs> no, it's cool because this is, this is how much gibberish the man is talking right now. Right, right, This is right. the gibberish that he's talking. But there's three things that you can do to bypass probate. Uh, number one, Obviously, life insurance. Life insurance bypasses probate if you have a beneficiary named on the uh, policy, right? So if it's your Mm -hmm. wife, have your wife named. If something happens where you were both to die, make sure you have a secondary person as a beneficiary because otherwise it could, you know, the money will end up in your estate, which will be a part of probate. Uh, Bank accounts, right? A lot of people don't have joint bank accounts with their... uh, with their spouses, I have I you know I have a separate bank account uh, from my spouse. I have business uh, right. bank accounts and stuff, and m- my wife's not on that. But I can name her as a beneficiary of the bank account. Yeah, that not a lot of people way, know that. Yeah, yeah. That way, when I die, she only has to go to the bank with the death certificate. They see that she's the beneficiary of the bank account. She can continue to pay bills. And just take the money out and put it in her account at that point, and she mm-hmm. doesn't skip a beat, right? So if you have bank Ooh. accounts and you're not, if you're if you're, if it's a joint account, you're good. You're already on the account. So if your spouse dies, you still have access to the account. Um, but imagine have, a business account. Imagine a business account where you oh, didn't yeah. have your spouse. You, you don't have your spouse. That's going straight into probate. Oh, that's ugly. That's Ooh, ugly. That's ugly. So I would Man. I would suggest that you know you could talk to your bank, say, hey, I want to put my spouse on as a beneficiary of the account. So if something was to happen to me, she would come here. Y'all give her my money, which is her money, and it doesn't have to go because what happens is when it goes through probate, they freeze the accounts. Yeah, everything stops. They will freeze the bank accounts. The mortgage is still going to be due. The car notes is still going to be due. All your bills are still going to be due. But that money is going to be tied up until probate is done. So that's something which is that the you last can do. thing you want for your family. Oh hell, no. right? That's not what you right. want. But that just shows you how much gibberish that he's talking. And I know he's well meaning. I know mm-hmm. that he wants to help people. But the things that he's saying is uh, is ridiculous. Let's keep this going. You want to get even deeper, own two um, trust funds for your business and your person to run that trust that runs all the business. Um, trust funds for your business and your person to run that trust that runs all the business. And to run that trust. All right, so you have two trusts in this situation. Oh, two trusts. All you right. have a trust that owns the business, okay? It's most likely not irrevocable. It's, I mean, it's, it's most li- likely not revocable. It's just probably saying a revo- uh, 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 irrevocable, meaning it's in and you can't make changes for the business. <laughs> okay, yeah. And all your personal assets, right? Okay. The paperwork alone, people. That's like, insane. Like, understand how much this stuff costs. It's ongoing fees, right? I have to prepare the uh, the 1041 uh, trust tax returns. I have to give out the K-1s to the beneficiaries. I have to still do your personal tax returns. Most of y'all who are hearing this uh, financial advice, this is, it's this unfeasible. Is it's financially unfeasible for you to do. You would be losing more money than you would be protecting by having this complex estate plan. 
I mean, it's like why and you go over this do and this? you go over this stuff every year. At least that's how every, I do it on mine. Every, every year, year you review oh, it. Yeah. You got to do, man. Every, you're gonna go through this <laughs> every year. You're gonna go through this. Some people, when it's more complex, we're gonna have a quarterly conversation. Right. Exactly. Right. This, this stuff is not uh, easy or cheap to maintain. Most people, this is just so silly to do. And here, here's the real uh, the, the the bottom line. This is the bottom line of why I did this episode. People are so damn quick to try to find the hustle. To try, mm. they're, they're trying to find the glitch <laughs> in the matrix to become yeah, wealthy. Sure mm -hmm. Listen, for this to make sense, you need to first be wealthy. How about, <laughs> how about you stop listening to this gibberish, work That's your funny. ass off, build up an estate worth protecting with this extremely complex estate plan, then you should have a conversation with someone like me or an estate planning attorney. Then we have right. something to protect. Then we can talk about something. But you and your little business that does about $45,000 in real life, but on your tax return, you only claim that you make around seventeen dollars or $18,000 because you're trying to get the max earned income tax credit. I know who... Like, I've been doing this for years. <laughs> I know who you are. I know the uh, audience that Mr. Flocker is talking to. He's talking to people who probably make maybe 45, 50, maybe even $60,000 a year, but they don't show on their tax return because they don't want to have to pay tax. They still want to get the earned income tax credit. They're still trying to get that inflated child tax credit. They still want to have about an eight to $12,000 tax refund. So they're not claiming all the income that they're making. You don't need a complex estate plan like this. You need a will, a medical directive, make sure that your, your spouse is a beneficiary on your uh, bank accounts and your life insurance and call it a day. This is for someone who's in the top percent of wealth in this country. And even some of them don't go to the extent of the shit that he said. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what he's saying right now. <laughs> Even billionaires don't go this far. There's some millionaires who don't go this far in it. But all right, I'm, I'm gonna open up the link. I'm gonna op open <laughs> up funny. the link. Oh, someone put it down here. Yeah, da, 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 da. add yeah, POD payable on death. That's the yeah. beneficiary on the bank account. On the bank account, or yeah. an account where you're not a joint person on that bank mm -hmm. account. It's called a POD payable on death. You could talk mm -hmm. to your uh, bank teller or whatever. And you could just do it right then and there. The same way that yeah, you put I did it. on a uh, on the insurance, you can put them on your bank account. It's super easy. You just go straight in there and talk to them. They'll do it, man. They'll be happy to fill out that paperwork. Mm -hmm. They'll get it done for you. A fifty dollars super chat for uh, from Carney Pressure says uh, in doing a four hundred one k Rob's or are you saying Roth rollover? Or Roth? Uh, I'm not sure what uh, the Rob's part on there, but a 401k rollover in Virginia, uh, retired with two growing companies. Who should I talk to to make this uh, these this move? You should go to let's make a plan dot org. All right. Go to let's make a plan dot org. I'm about to pull it up here. Let me see. Let's. Let's make a plan dot org. So let's make a plan dot org is going to be uh, a website where you can find the certified financial planner that is closest to you. And you can look and you can review their qualifications, see if they actually uh, deal with what you're talking about. Uh, let me try to bring it up here. All right, let me see here, let me see here. So let me share this. You wanna go to Let's Make a Plan org here we go let's make a plan.org as you can see if i go back a little bit boom if you go to let's make a plan.org you see this guy you see this guy right here so i, I i'm <laughs> listed on there but uh, i'm most likely like you said i'm not in uh virginia so i wouldn't suggest it, you no no it's it's vater it's veteran that's what she meant oh she said i'm a, oh i'm a veteran, I'm veteran. okay well still mm -hmm. you know uh yeah. you go to let's make a plan.org Find a CFP professional right here. You can put your information in of uh, the your zip code, city, state, whatever, and you can find the nearest CFP to you. And that's what I suggest that you should do when you have questions like that. And obviously, they'll be able to refer you 
to any uh, subject matter experts. Like, let's say you have some issues legally that you need to draw up a trust or a will or something like that. They are going to refer you to someone licensed to actually draw up the will, but they can be actively involved in helping you create your financial plan, including your uh, your estate plan. So that's what I would suggest to do. Thank you for the uh, uh, for the super chat, the fifty dollars super chat. So I'm going to put a link down here because we got one more hour. I'm not doing five hours a night. We got one more hour, and I'm going <laughs> to allow y'all guys to uh, come on up. Let me know what y'all think about Mr. Flocker and his financial advice. And if you have any questions, you can let me know. All right. So join the show. The link is in the chat in five, four, three, two, one. But while we wait on that, let me kind of break this down. So it says, because I'm, I'm assuming they were typing fast. So they're saying, I'm doing a 401k rollover. I'm a veteran retired with two growing companies. Who should I talk to? Well, like I said, you should obviously talk to a, a certified financial planner. And when you go to letsmakeaplan.org, it will show you what that planner specializes in. But when you're rolling mm -hmm. over the 401k, obviously what you're saying is you have a 401k that was with a employer. You're rolling it over into an IRA, right? Something that right. you can control. Now you can make certain decisions on really an unlimited option of what you can invest in, or you can just hold it uh, in the uh, uh, the IRA with the same assets that you had before. But when you leave your job, you can no longer contribute to the 401k. That's Correct. why we're, we're almost always going to abdicate that when you leave a job, don't leave the money over there unless there's some sort of uh, reason why the money's holed up and you got to wait a little bit. But right. in general, in a general sense, you need to roll that those assets over into a uh, IRA that you control, that you can contribute to, and you can direct. But yeah, talk right. to a, uh, a CFP in your area, and they would definitely take care of you. All right, let me see any questions. Oh, we got some more Super Chats here. We got uh, Natalie, right? It says, uh, guys, let's support our amazing brothers. Get those likes up. Thank you. She did a Super Chat to tell y'all to get the likes up. You can't beat that. <laughs> Thank you so, so Definitely much. Can't. And then we got Lamar with the $10 super chat. No question. Uh, no, hold on. There's a question. There. So let, me, let me stop. There's a question. Trust versus Lady Bird deed. Which is better? I'm I'm confused by the, the by the Lady Bird deed. I mean, I yeah, might I'm know never, what you're talking about, but I haven't heard it referred to that. Don't super chat me. You don't have to super chat me again. Just explain what you mean by uh lady bird deed and maybe i can give you a little bit more insight on what we're talking about here uh ba -ba 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 -ba. another one says uh no c corp long story yeah i mean with with the c corp normally i mean the only reason why you would want to, to do the c corp is if there's a particular reason why you cannot have your personal income and this company's income merge together, right? Because most other business structures, the business income and your income, same thing. So solo member LLC, that's still all you. Uh, partnership, your percentage of the partnership, it flows through to you. An S corporation, if you own 100% of the S corp or you own some other S corp, whatever your percentage is, it flows through to you. With the C corporation, it does not. It all stays over here in the C corporation. So if that's attractive to you for whatever reason, then yeah, a C corporation would make sense. But for most small businesses, the C corporation doesn't make sense. Here, here's a real reason why. Here, here are not a real, but a better reason why. Most of y'all only have a business to show losses. <laughs> Let, let's keep it real. That's most so of y'all, with y'all little business, y'all little home-based <laughs> business, Oh, the reason why you have your little home-based business is that you want to show losses, right? Let's be real. There's a, a, a woman online. Uh, what's her name? Lynn Richardson. I did an episode on Lynn Richardson. And Lynn Richardson is the super proponent for everybody needs to have a home-based business. And oh, okay. uh, based on the information that I've seen on her, and I haven't seen every video clip that she's ever done so obviously 
my perspective on Lynn Richardson and her financial ad advice that she gives is somewhat limited, but I can only tell you and give you commentary based on what I've seen. And based on what I've seen, Lynn Richardson is saying everybody needs to have a home-based business because all the tax write-offs that you get, right? So that's the mindset of a lot of these small businesses. Think about all the write-offs you get. Here's the problem for you guys. If it's a C corporation and you have all these write-offs for your little home-based business, let's say it's like $30,000, right? Let's say you make $100,000. You're used to being able to take your fifteen or twenty thousand dollar write off to drop your hundred thousand dollar income down to eighty thousand, and then you still got your standard deduction and whatnot. If it's a C corporation, those losses stay over there. Mm -hmm. You don't get to deduct C corporation losses against your ordinary income. So for most of y'all who are students of the Lynn Richardson mindset, and once again, and she she actually, her, her people emailed me. Um, her people emailed me and she was like, I've never been called a, a, a scammer in my life. And I was like, you, you still haven't been called a scammer. If you watch my episode, <laughs> I didn't call you a scammer. I said the stuff that you talked about seemed scammy. But uh, <laughs> if you are a student of that mindset oh, that you need to have a home-based business so you can have all these write-offs, a C corporation ain't going to help you because the C corporation losses stay over there. So all that money that you're wasting on your little home-based business so you can take a loss is not going to benefit you. So just keep that in mind. All right. We got someone in back. Oh, we got Monique. We got Monique in the back. All right. So let's set this up. Here we go. What's going on, Monique? Hey, Monique. hey, hey, y'all. Hey, JT in Orlando. Um, I had to come in on this. All right, all right. Uh, for a couple reasons, and I most of the time, of course, I, I agree with you just based on the way our brain works. Um, but I will say, sometimes depending on what you are doing or the bigger picture, right, of what you're doing. Uh, it may make sense to, you know, jump to a C-Corp first, but I agree with you. They have to, most times people don't get all of the full information, right? right. So they're, they're not totally understanding what the possibilities are. Yeah, if you take, you take dividends, you're going to be taxed on both. You know, right. they kind of... You know, I, I hear people tell me all the time when they when they come to me for my advice or for my help, the same kind of thing. It's like, oh, well, they they told me that I was going to be uh, taxed twice. And we understand you are going to be taxed tw twice. But depending right. on how much money that corporation makes. Right. Paying taxes twice may still be less than paying taxes on that full amount of money as an individual. All right. Well, let's let's let, let's okay. play this logic all the way out. Give me an example okay. where where that works out, because I'm sure there I, is. But give, give me an example. Let's say uh, they're a, a half a million dollar company, right? OK, C so so a half a million dollars netting. They are netting yeah. a half a million dollars. OK, yes. All right, let's go. And so once they're done with everything, the business has a half a million dollars left or mm -hmm. um not say or and so as one of the owners or the president or whatever they want to be mm -hmm. um they take up they take a pay take pay for whatever they're going to use so say for example me right i don't right. necessarily take pay from from my business because i do something else that i don't necessarily have to right right so if you say i say at the end okay you know what i do want to take 50k out right i would okay once in that that just say December. I pay myself 50K out of right. my business. So that's all I'm going to use from that business. It would make right. more logical sense, financial sense, mm -hmm. for me to do my 50K than to have it where that full 500,000 is flowing over to me yeah. as a, yeah. Well, in, in that situation, absolutely. Because in that situation, you're going to have that $500,000 being taxed at a 21% tax rate. $500,000 on the individual level is not the 21% 20, <laughs> 20 tax rate. Right? It's going to be much higher. You know, about like 37% or something like that. 
So yeah, the tax rate, you're going to be taxed less and you're only pulling out, like you said, $50,000. So in that situation, yes. The issue is <laughs> most businesses are not half a million dollar net businesses where the person doesn't even need to take a salary. Right. Most businesses are owner operated, maybe bringing in somewhere $30,000 to $100,000. <laughs> and they're living off of damn near 100% of the net income from mm -hmm. the business. So yeah, in that situation, yeah. Because that's one of the caveats that I said. If there's a reason why separating the income from yourself is a uh, you know paramount in the reasoning of why you're uh, organizing this business, then yeah, you need to go with a C corp. But you know, a couple of episodes ago, we already talked about most businesses ain't on that level, right? And well, most businesses will never be on that level. I hope y'all get there, but. You know, odds it's are right. you'll never be on that level. So to start out as a, and, and, and here's the thing, even in that situation, I wouldn't say start out as, as a, as a C-Corp. Right. You can change as it grows. Oh, so when right. the company first started within its first five years, maybe it's a uh, LLC. Uh -huh. Then when it starts to grow in the year five through year 15, maybe we need to reevaluate and get taxed as an escort. Then as it grows even beyond that point from year 15 to year 20 and 30, and we're, we're netting $500,000 and the owner of the business doesn't even need to live off this money, right. then yeah, let's go ahead and we can switch to a C Corp. So it's an ongoing process because here's the main thing. Most businesses in that first year, they take a loss. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Maybe even the first two to three years, they take a loss. Most small businesses are operated by someone who probably has a W-2 job at the uh -huh. same time they're operating that business. If it's a C-Corp, they're looking at they the can. loss over there and yeah. they're not able to take advantage of that tax deduction personally. Right. So that's why it should really come in stages. But in the scenario that you gave, yeah, that's a perfect reason why a C-Corp would, uh, uh, would make sense. And real quick, let's just talk the truth, because really what he's saying is what a lot of people are doing and why they're doing. Oh, I got my LLC or oh, I got my this and that and trying to separate is because they think that they can because I have this all the time. I have people come and they'll show me their just say I'm looking at their business bank statements. Right. And they're right. saying, well, well, no, I, I I'm I didn't make any I didn't make any money. But we're saying you went on vacation to Disney World from the business bank account. Right, uh, right, right. When <laughs> you, you got your braids, you got your braids done at the braid shop. Yeah, because um, cuz they got to look good. They got to look good for the business. <laughs> How is the business going to operate? I own a tow truck business. How is the business going to operate properly if I don't get my nails done once a week? Right. Right. <laughs> what that comes down to people is that you're trying to funnel your lifestyle expenses through the business. And mm, most, a, a no -no. I'm not going to say most, a lot of companies do it. A lot of companies do it and a lot of companies get away with it. But then you're going to get audited. Well, 100% of the companies and the people who funnel their personal expenses through the business, will they get caught? No. You know, I'm sorry. If the IRS is watching, let me, t let me tell the dirty secret, IRS. Uh -huh. There's not enough agents to catch it. There just uh -huh. isn't. And most of y'all, to be honest, y'all don't make enough money to make it worth it for them to <laughs> run you down, Dumbass. right? Uh -huh. Now, there are such things as random audits. You can be randomly audited, and when they find it, they're going to catch it, and you're going to have to pay back that uh, tax that you should have paid plus interest. And then there are situations where you run afoul of the authorities for a separate reason, and then the IRS can come after you for this reason. So it happens mm -hmm. all the time. So, but honestly, you shouldn't try to funnel your personal expenses through the business. You can call me a simp if you want to, but I'm just right. telling you based off the law, what you should be doing. There's many yeah. ways that you can reduce your tax liability that's actually legal, right? There's many ways yes. that you can do yes. it legally instead of <laughs> running these chances Higher. of getting audited or even going to the crazy point of really having 
uh, tax evasion criminal mm -hmm. charges, right? We're not talking about civil penalties of you just having to pay back tax. We're talking about you being criminally liable for tax evasion. Just go see a qualified professional. Stop trying to hustle the game, right? That's the problem. You're Always hustling, hustling. back. Yeah. And the last, the last thing, JT, can you uh -huh. please explain to these people who are now everybody, oh, I got my business credit. I built my business credit. I got my car and my business name, business credit. And but it says 19% interest on this car. Like, can, you, <laughs> can you explain? I keep trying to explain to my right. clients and then just to those that I do videos for, it's still you. So you still got to pay for it. So why right. would you sign for a bad loan or a high interest loan just because it's, it's in the name of the. It's in the name of the business. Yeah. I would. I would love to hit this, but Orlando's way more qualified. He's in oh, the Orlando. banking <laughs> industry. This is what the man does. So Orlando, please knock this one. Yes, out please, part. Orlando. Yeah, yeah. I, I tell people we. We. I kind of covered it earlier when I told people that when you get into a business loan, it's the. It's a business, right? So more than likely, when it comes to loans, well, all the time you're going to get charged a higher interest rate. So it doesn't matter if you put your home in the LLC. It doesn't matter if you put your car in the LLC. Those things are business expenses. Businesses are risky, right? Businesses will can fall off faster than you personally. So you're going to get charged. More risk to me means more of uh, the interest rate is going to be higher for you. So that's what she's tried to say is why would you go ahead and switch it over into um, your into a business name rather than having it in your personal name. Plus, also to this whole thing with business credit, I see it running rampant all the time. Uh -huh. Listen, guys, <laughs> when it comes to business credit, you it you are are the guarantor guarantor of that, right? So if anything happens. I make you sign a, a, a loan agreement. It says that if anything happens with this business loan, I'm coming after you individually. Guaranteed. You yes. are personally guaranteed on that loan. So thinking that just because you put something in a business name and all of a sudden you have no responsibility at all for it, it doesn't work that way. You right. are tied to that loan financially. You're financially responsible for that. Yeah, I'm going to take it one more step orlando because that's a great point right? right if if you're a new business and you get a uh business loan nine and a half times out of ten you're going to be personally guaranteeing that loan oh the yeah business yeah. does not have enough history to stand alone with that loan and without you personally guaranteeing but here i'm gonna give you a scenario where there is no personal guarantee and how you can still end up personally liable. So here we go. Okay. Let's say you get a loan for operating uh, money for your business, no personal guarantee, which is extremely hard to do. Right. Extremely <laughs> hard to do, but we're looking at the fairy tale land. Okay, okay. So let's say you get that loan and you start buying personal stuff with it, mm -hmm. right? You know, you're buying cars, Maybe you buy a home. You, you, you're buying personal stuff. With it. You go on vacation, right? Then hard times hit and you say, hey, I'm just going to file bankruptcy from for the business and I'm walking away. During the bankruptcy process, there is going to be a meeting that takes place. First, you got to announce to everybody that you're going bankrupt, that you're filing bankrupt to give oh, yeah. all of your creditors an opportunity to have a say in bankruptcy court. Then there's going to be a meeting that takes place. And at this meeting, any one of your creditors can step up and say, hey, let's take a look at this and see what's going on. And there is a concept of clawback, right? If someone who you owe a business debt inspects your transactions and they see your personal car, your home, vacations that you took with the money that was supposed to be solely for the business, right? Mm -hmm. They can convince the judge and say, no, they cannot file bankruptcy and discharge my uh, the debt in this bankruptcy because they didn't use the money for what they said they were going to use the money for. Mm -hmm. They used the money personally and not with the business. So since they decided to use my business loan for personal stuff, 
Now it's detached. It's attached to them personally. And if they want to get rid of this, they're going to have to file bankruptcy personally and not just with the business. So you can <laughs> even find a way to get a loan where you don't personally guarantee and you can still fumble the ball and end up having to either pay back this money personally or you have to file bankruptcy personally. And one of, and one of the things that I always tell people is that when you go through and you read all these documents, it for me, especially for me, when you get documents for me, when it comes to at a closing, there's going to there's going to be this document that says that all the, the money that I'm giving you, the cash, out, it, you're going to use it for business purposes only. And when, right. once you sign that, once you sign that, it's fair game. Right. Exactly. <laughs> it's fair game. If you go start do you go on vacation with the money right. and all that other stuff. Right. <laughs> Right. I'm telling you, man. Right, exactly. Black Black Valley has it 100 correct. It's called piercing the corporate. Corporate. Damn. You think for a second they just gonna write that off? They just gonna mm -hmm. say, oh, okay, well, we gave this guy a loan for three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and now because this there's a lines of credit, right? Your business can have a line of credit. So yep. if they have that line of credit, and then you default on it. Well, normally they're going to look at all the transactions. This 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 is isn't, isn't rocket science. They're going to look at the transactions, right? And they're going to say, "Hold on. I'm seeing plane tickets. I'm seeing resort fees. I'm seeing all this stuff that doesn't <laughs> seem to be business related. We're going to have an issue." And then not only are you going to have an issue with the person you owe or the uh business that you owe the money to, now the IRS are involved. Yep. Why? Because you were probably taking business deductions on yep. all that stuff. So now your bankruptcy case has grown into something that you were not expecting because what happened? You played yourself. Played yourself. You played yep. yourself. All right, Monique, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're now, welcome. We're about to wrap right this thing up, but we got right, one person back here. Uh, you have a good one. All right, we got Kush Brother back here. What's going on, Kush Brother? We talked uh, earlier this week, didn't we? No, I just want to say I emailed you. Oh, okay. I you sent, you sent that to me. All right, perfect. I'm going to check it out. Did you do what I said about, about the subject? Yeah, I put the stars up there and please right, good. help. And I... <laughs> good, good, good. I will be reaching out to you before the close of business tomorrow. All right? Thank you, brother. Thank you. All right. You got thank it. You. you got it. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, people. Me and Orlando are going to be down. on maybe five or ten minutes here. Uh, I'll read some questions in the chat. If anybody wants to come up in that time, feel free. Check it out. Uh, let me see any questions here. Uh, hey, we got a good question here. We got no name. No name says, hey, JT, I'm in school for accounting. He says, uh, CPA or CFP? Great question. Now, just to shamelessly promote myself, I have a second channel. And uh, I answer questions and I do stuff like this on the second channel. Let me see if I can bring it up here. It is called uh, Pocket Watchers Black Financial Planners. So let me bring that up real quick so I can show you guys the new channel. On this channel, I deal with, uh, you know, the financial planning industry, how to get uh, into it. Let me bring that up so you guys can see. Go here, share. Let me see. Sorry, sorry. Technical difficulties, people. Technical difficulties. Let's bring this up here. Here we go. All right. So on this new channel right here, this is where I cover a lot of questions like this. But since you're here right now, I'm going to answer your question. All right, so you said that you're in school for accounting and you want to know uh, what's the better route, you know, to go the CPA right, route or the CFP route. Here's the main question that you need to ask yourself before you can figure that out. What type of work are you trying to do? OK, so as a CPA, if you go the route for a CPA, you're going to either go the route of being a public accountant dealing with taxes are you going to be a, a an accountant dealing with audit or are you going to be working in industry, meaning working for a company doing their bookkeeping in a general sense? There's other stuff, but in a general sense, you can do that. If you go the CFP route and you also get 
your EA license, you can do tax exactly the same as any CPA, right? So tax by itself, if you just want to do tax, honestly, going the CPA route is not the only route to go. But if you want to also deal with investments, right? If you want to deal with investments, then the CFP route is the way to go because you can actually give financial advice. As a CPA, you can only give tax advice or bookkeeping advice. Uh, you can't give investment advice unless you're also licensed to give investment advice. Uh, as a CFP, you can give investment advice and then you can take the EA exam and also give tax advice. Uh, most CFPs are going to be more um, business owners. Most CFPs are going to be you know, self-employed percentage wise. Uh, most uh, CPAs are probably going to be employees. If you just take a look at the overall percentages per each professional, most C, uh, CPAs are probably employees, while most CFPs are going to be self-employed in some sort of way. So you really need to ask yourself, do I want to work with tax and investments or do I want to work with tax and bookkeeping? And if you can answer that question, you can figure out which one is uh, best for you. All right, let's see here. We got uh, the spy in the back room. So the spy, what's going on? Hey, what's up, JT? Yes, sir. What's up? What, do you, what do you think about uh, this this financial advice that we're getting? <laughs> the financial advice that we get from Mr. Waka Flocka Flank. I didn't even hear it. I joined late because I was doing oh. some stuff online, but I'm, I'm sure it's horrible. <laughs> I'm well, not sure it's horrible. Here's the issue, and I want to. I want to. We got the uh, uh, the tax coach Courtney, who was on uh, the other day. That everybody wanted her IG. Uh, okay. She says uh, I debated for years about being a CPA, but I chose EA because I love tax. Yeah, I mean that's the main thing because people don't even understand. If you go to CPA or, uh, CPA route and you want to do tax, understand that you're going to be taking four different exams. Only one of them deal with tax. And it doesn't even deal with tax 100%. It probably deal with tax more like 75%. And it doesn't really teach you how to be a tax advisor. If you take the uh, CPA exam, it's going to teach you the proper way to prepare tax returns. If you take the EA exam, you're going to learn how to prepare business returns, prepare individual returns, but there's also a third part of the exam called representation. That's where you go from a tax preparer to a tax advisor, the representation, being able to know exactly how to be that middleman between your client and the IRS to resolve problems. So yeah, I, I thought about it a lot too. I figured my route to go was EA and CFP because I was more of a tax guy, an investment guy. I wasn't an auditor. I'm not doing all of those damn exams just to do, to not do audits. If you go the route of being a CPA and you don't do audits, it's like you really did a lot of work when you could have just sh shortcutted it just a little bit and just been an EA if you're just going to do tax. But that's 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 my personal belief. Obviously, there's a bunch of other people, but the spy. Okay, so clearly you, you didn't hear the uh, the Mr. Flocka advice but basically what it comes down to is it was a lot of gibberish about an extremely complex business and trust structure for an individual and he's speaking to an audience that don't don't need to hear that type of uh advice <laughs> right. only a fraction of people in the united states would even come close to needing an estate plan like that so while i applaud mr flame for trying to promote financial literacy, I have to give them a, an F grade on actually giving actionable advice to the people who are listening. That, that That's my issue. Okay. I, I think that is a problem with a lot mm -hmm. of YouTubers. A lot of people that make money on YouTube, they give advice that's so advanced that 90% of the people can't even use it. Yeah. So it's like, they want to the sound smart. You yeah, don't it's... sound smart saying this. Like, like, like this is what I say. Uh, you need to save about three to four, three to six months of an emergency savings fund. You need to pay down debt and then just slowly invest. You don't have to be a business owner to become a millionaire. You can work a decent job, invest around 15 percent of your annual income and you can retire comfortably. Yeah, it's boring. You don't get it. You don't nobody get a wants, lot of viewers. Yeah, saying nobody wants that. <laughs> <laughs> so All right, I, I got a legit business question. All right, let's go. Let's do it. 
I think I'm doing a lot of stuff right. Been in business for about five years. I saw on Amazon and eBay. All mm -hmm. right. So here's a question. I did an S Corp about two years ago. Okay. So I, I'm, I run everything through QuickBooks. I do my payroll through QuickBooks. Good. All that set up. I pay myself a certain amount a year. I think the general thing was 60K. Okay. So every time I pay myself, let's say to get 4,200, I pay 800 in taxes. My business pay 800 in taxes. Okay. So, okay. So I pay like 5,400 5, out of my business account. That's okay. said and done. So at the end of the year, my 60K I'm paying myself, that's already paid with taxes since I've already paid that throughout the you've year, doing, right? Yeah, you've been doing that throughout the year through payroll deductions on your W-2. Okay, perfect. Right. Got that part. But okay. now when I claim the profit of my business that's classified as an S-Corp, Right, which now is a passive source of income Correct. that yeah. avoids self-employment tax, which is 15.3%. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so now the taxes I've, the personal taxes I've paid off of the money I receive, does that also go towards my business profit or that's just completely separate? All right, good question. Good question. Okay. So it's somewhat of an overlap. So here's the deal. I, I'm going to give this scenario. Let's say you are making a net of $200,000 from your business, okay? okay? Your business is an S Corp. You take a salary of uh, $50,000, okay? Okay. You paid, if you filled out your W-4 correctly for your own company, yeah. you paid the adequate amount of taxes on the $50,000 salary, okay? okay. Now, as far as the flow through income of the one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, you haven't paid enough taxes on that money. OK, mm -hmm. OK. What's going to end up happening is let's say you didn't have the flow through income. You just had the W two fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Most likely you would be in a position where you're going to get a refund. Let's say you would get a refund of one or two thousand dollars. OK. okay. Now that you have that flow through income of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars from the S Corp, you're not getting hit. Once again, you're not getting hit with 15.3 percent self-employment tax. You're yeah. only getting hit at your ordinary income, uh, a personal income tax rate. Right. Okay. So you're still going to be able to deduct from the one fifty plus the fifty thousand uh, W-2. So it's still going to say total income is still going to say. Two hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. But you still have the opportunity to take either your itemized deduction or your standard deduction to get that number lower. Okay. Okay. You already pay taxes on the fifty, and in most situations, you probably overpay taxes on the fifty. Okay. Okay. So the tax that's due just based on the S corp income you're probably going to get a couple thousand dollar reduction on that based on your overpayment of tax on the 50. So but basically you're still it's going to have a tax, like a tax yeah. credit yeah, to yeah, overpay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're uh, still yeah. going to have a tax liability on most of that 150. So what should you do? What you should do is make quarterly estimated tax payments throughout the year on the one. 50 from the S Corp so that when you go to get your tax return prepared, you have the 1120S that has to be prepared. That's going to give you the K1 for the 150. Then you have your W2 from the company that's going to show the 50, right? You're going to have all that. But if you made the quarterly estimated tax payments properly during the year, then you're going to have enough taxes already in the system so that at worst, you're going to write a check for maybe $1,000. Right. Depending yeah, I, on how often you meet with your accountant to make the adjustments that need to be made. OK, I did that two years ago and I actually got a refund. But right. since Corona hit, I've been kind of just making sure the business stays afloat. Right. All right. One more question. This one. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's say let's say I'm at 250, which. For the most part, I am. All right. I so, my, so the business is net in 250. Yeah. I, okay. Like it's. Like basically on QuickBooks, cash in is like 1.8 million. Expenses mm -hmm. and everything is like 1.3 mil, 1.6 million. And then it comes down to around 250. Okay. That's like my taxes from last year. Okay. All right. So I pay myself 60k. So that's out out of the 250, or is that additional to the two 
250. Out of the two, out of the 250. Out of the 250. Okay. So that's last year. I can't do much about that. But I'm thinking if I should increase how much my base salary is, or no, 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 you don't, you you're shooting yourself in the foot. Don't do that. I'll so just leave it at 60. Then. Don't do that. No, 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 no. Because when you increase your base salary, you are increasing the income that is subject to Social Security and Medicare. Okay, so you want that at the the least reasonable amount that right you you oh, want right. it to be comparable right. for if some if you were to hire someone else not you if you were to hire someone else to do the job function that you do in that business that's the salary that you should be paying yourself everything else you want to at all costs avoid social security and medicare so you would be better off what it sounds like it sounds like a discipline issue Anytime I have someone who wants to increase their W-2 income and decrease their K-1 income, this sounds like <laughs> a discipline issue. Mm -hmm. And the way that you solve a discipline issue is that you set up automatic payments for your quarterly estimates. The same way you have payroll deductions when you pay yourself with the paycheck, you can set up with your bank account and basically say every three months, I want X amount of money to be transferred from my bank account to another bank account. Or you can set it up to where you uh, do the uh, quarterly estimated tax payments and a debit from your checking account and it goes to directly to the IRS where you're not physically having to write that check. Because it just has, when someone has to write a check, there's too much thinking that goes on. Oh, yeah. When you, like, start, when you right. start to write those numbers down in the check, you start to be like, man, do I really want to give the IRS this money? But if you do, you can uh, go to irs.gov, uh, do the uh, the uh, pay, you know, click the pay button, and you can set up a debit and have it come out of your account. Because literally, when you do yeah, that, yeah, I, I did it before. I, I just have to do it. Yeah, I have like... you have you set it up where you post date when the money comes out? No, nah, I haven't done that. I've just this, done it where, like every this, quarter hit. I would just pay. And yeah, then... and see, the issue mm. is every time you pay, you feel the punch in your gut. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this, this is what I would suggest that you do. You can go online, and when it says when, because you can give the date when you want the transaction to happen. Do the transaction for a date in the future. You can basically set it up so where you do it, so where you say, okay, in three months, take the money out. Mm. And then in the next uh. three months, take another amount out, right? right. That way, it almost feels automatic. If you did it, let's say you do you do it all in January. You do you do four transactions on the irs.gov site, but each one of them are post dated for the quarterlies. So now it's already set. You, now you still got time to cancel that transaction if something changes, but it's yeah. automatic. That's what I would say do. Okay, cool. That, that that's the thing because I think I'm doing like everything ninety five percent right, but I feel mm -hmm. like there's just five percent I'm missing. Now it just sounds like nuts. what you what you want to do. Don't increase your W two income unless you're grossly underpaying what your labor should be getting paid. I, I, I but, just dropped it as we were talking. I went to right, right, yeah. and dropped I would, it. I, yeah, I would not increase it because now you're just paying more in Social Security and Medicare tax. You're you're giving the IRS more of that fifteen point three percent than you should. Okay. Right. No. Right. Okay. That was a big thing I was thinking about. I want to make sure everything's set up for this year. All right. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. All right. Anytime. Anytime. All right. Thank you for uh, coming on the show. All right. Thanks. Man. All right. All right. We are getting close to that end mark, but we got a brother in the back. We got Broderick Brown. Did I say your name correctly? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, uh, JT. I appreciate it. Um, All right. What's had, going on? I just had a quick question. I actually have a C Corp. Um, I have a law office that I run. Okay. And it's in C Corp, and I switched my tax preparer, and he suggested that I change, but we haven't, we haven't changed. So some of the things you talked about, mm -hmm. um, I like felt because at the end of every year, prior to this year, I, I would basically run everything down and just pay myself. Yeah. You what 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 <laughs> normally happens? <laughs> what normally happens in that situation is, let's say, you look at the end of the year and the company did two hundred thousand dollars, right? And you already paid yourself 50. And you're like, mm -hmm. I don't want to get double tax on the other 150. So I'm going to write myself a bonus check. And I'm going to zero it out so where the C corporation made nothing and it all came to me. Well, hell, what's the reason of having to pay me 
to do the 1120 corporate tax return when we're showing zero every year. You might as well just uh, get an LLC and request to be taxed as an S corp and just do right. it that way because you're, you're basically that doing that, but you're getting paid. You're you're paying more than you need to to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, my question to uh, tonight was, what are your thoughts on defined benefit plans? Because for, for yourself. Yeah, because it's, 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 it's just you, right? There's no other, uh, no other employees. Um, I have, I basically have a staffing agency, so there's no okay. Other so employees. really, so if it's a staffing agency, that least employees, so they're not technically your employee. So it, it's, they don't have to be a part of this plan. It's Correct. just going to be you. Okay. So what you're referring to, and let me see. Uh, thanks a lot, Jay. Oh yeah, anytime, anytime. Uh, the uh, spy. Um. What you're referring to, for people who are unaware, it's a pension plan, right? So what you're talking about is a pension plan. And a pension plan is basically saying, I'm going to create a retirement plan that's going to guarantee a certain amount of payments for this person, right? I'm going to create an investment off over here to the side. And when you retire, I'm going to guarantee that I'm going to pay you, let's say, $4,000 a month into the day you die, right? I'm going to do $4,000 a month into the day you die. But the issue is, it's just you. It's just you. So it's not as if you're using this as a incentive for employees, right? Not talent. But Right. So whatever whatever way that you would have invested the money for the money to grow. You don't want to restrict the way that you receive the money. Right. Because in a pension, you're not guaranteed in a, in a general sense. If you were a employee and you're receiving a pension. That full bag isn't yours. You're only guaranteed the monthly payments as long as you're alive. Mm -hmm. When you die, the payments stop. Right? Right. In a general, in a general uh, uh, a pension plan. So, I mean, in your, your situation, I mean, it's different because you own it and it's all, it will all ultimately be yours. But, I mean, what's, what's the advantage? Do you feel like you don't have enough time to simply do like a SEP IRA or a solo 401k? I mean, what, well, the, what's the motivation of a pension? Because the pension, one good thing for a pension is when you have a person who is a little older and they don't have the time to see a account grow over 20 or 30 years, mm -hmm. right? A pension is great for them because while they're not going to get a big bag of money that they can access willy-nilly whenever they want, they have a constant inflow of money in retirement. As long as they're alive, they're getting X amount every month. So what's the what's what's it attracting you to start up a pension plan for yourself when you're by yourself? All right. So I'm married and both me and my wife are high wage earners. I've already tapped out the set. Oh. I've already tapped out the step I read. There's not a ton. I can't buy real estate through the firm. There's not a ton of big write-offs that that I can incur. And so the, the issue is by doing the pension plan or the defined benefit plan, mm -hmm. I basically double, maybe even triple my contributions to my retirement, basically deferring my taxes and still have, I think I was told that I could have some sort of side 401k-like um, uh, vehicle too. So, because the issue is right now for past a certain point, I'm basically just giving half my money to the government and my wife works a W-2 job, job, so there's not a whole lot she can do to sort of decrease I got um, you. the taxes on her. Mm. I so got I'm you. I, okay, all right. So, so on the show, I can't give personal advice. Right. I, can only, <laughs> I can only teach general stuff. This okay. is what I would say. I would say just as, as uh, the person, the other person I talked to, I would say, go to letsmakeaplan.org. Find a CFP in your area that specializes in this so that they can give you personal advice. I can only give general 
financial education on this show. That's why I was explaining how stuff worked. But in your situation, it does make more sense why you should do this. I would say contact a CFP in your in your area that can give you personal advice. Okay. 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 Man, I appreciate um, all the good work. And, yeah. you know, since a lot of YouTubers are really self, I have to assume a lot of YouTubers are self employed mm -hmm. businesses. I'm surprised. I'm always surprised that you don't see a lot more people talking about this device in the finance space. Than yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, I, I think it just comes from they're not going to get the views. Like, yeah. I mean, I, we've got, you know, at one point we had around 600 people, which is which is pretty good for a finance uh, conversation, especially in the black YouTube space. But it's in rough. a general sense, man, <laughs> if we're not showing Rollies and Lambos, you're not going to you're just not going to get the views. And, you know, for me in Orlando, this is fun. You know, right. we have conversations like this privately. So why not cut on a camera and have this conversation? But I mean, it takes a lot of time and effort to build up right. a channel and make content. You kind of don't want to make content that no one's going <laughs> that no one's going to watch. Even though it is very relevant in the lives of a lot of YouTubers and a lot of small business owners, but if they ain't going to watch it, why? That that's right. the reason why. Nobody no one's going to watch it. You will, right? But we need about, you know, 500,000 of views to make right. it profitable. <laughs> right. That's what it is. No, well, I appreciate you. Salute, uh, salute to you, Arlen. I appreciate you guys. Thanks, man. Yes, sir. All right, boss. Thank you for coming on, man. You are absolutely welcome back anytime. We are so close to the two-hour mark. We're going to wrap this thing up. Oh, someone said, someone said they're currently re-watching Ozark. Listen, I'm such a big fan of, of, of Ozark, man. Me and my wife watch yeah. it watch it together. I mean... It, I, I'm almost about to say some spoilers. So, so, so uh, let I'm about me shout to say it. Don't say it because <laughs> I'm, I'm only three episodes in. I'm only three it's, episodes hey, in man. on the new on the new season. <laughs> oh, okay. On season season four, part one. Right, as right, they right, on, on right. Netflix. It, it's right. a great show. They they talk a lot about financial stuff. And, and for geeks like me in Orlando, we love that stuff. All we right, people. We about to wrap this thing <laughs> up. Uh, we appreciate y'all. Listen, we are going to be on the lead attorney's channel tomorrow. It's gonna be 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Can somebody please put the lead attorney's uh, information in the chat because I wanna make sure you guys come through, support, let the lead attorney know that we actually do have a little audience over here. We're pocket watching. <laughs> We're pocket watching with JT. We got a little. We got a little audience over here, so it would be extremely helpful. And uh, thank you, uh, Keon Savage, man. We appreciate it. Um, it would be a big help if you guys are free and available tomorrow, six p.m. Eastern time. That's what five p.m. Uh, Central mm -hmm. time. Yep. Please come over and support me and Orlando on the lead attorney's channel. The lead attorney lately has had like 8,000, 5,000, 6,000 people, but he's been covering, right. as you see, he's been covering this um, Tasha K versus Cardi B uh, civil lawsuit, which Tasha K lost, Cardi B won. Verdict was damn near uh, $4 million. So don't Let's not make that drop down to 300 people, right? <laughs> <laughs> we want to no, make sure the lead attorney invite us back. So if right, that's good, right, please, right, we, right. me and Orlando will be on the lead oh, attorney's funny. channel. As you can see, my brother uh, had <laughs> almost 150,000. Oh, He's the lead attorney, uh, you know, did a collab, and we've been going back and forth and really built up a relationship on YouTube back when he had, like, 10,000 subs and I had like mm. 4,000 subs. So please follow us over here on the lead attorney's channel. Hey, tomorrow. and look, I'm lagging all behind. I got 8,000. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody will care about real estate, huh? <laughs> Hopefully we we know tomorrow. And uh, when he brings it up, I'm probably going to share it on my community page, but it would be yeah, a here. huge, huge thing if y'all guys are there ready and supporting us and our brother, the lead attorney, tomorrow on his channel at, what, 6 p.m. Eastern yeah. Standard Time. Other than that, Orlando, you got any uh, parting words for the people? 
No, nah, no. Nah. We'll see you guys on the, on the Lee's channel tomorrow. All right, That's people. All thank say. you. Wednesday Night Lives with JT and Orlando. We will be on the Lead Attorneys channel tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I thank each and every one of y'all. We are this close to 50K, so make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, share the content. Thank you for pocket watching with us tonight. We will catch you guys next time, or hopefully tomorrow on the Lead Attorneys channel. All right, we out of here.